I te ingoa o te matua, o te tamaiti, o te wairu, o tapu. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome everyone to our Eucharist today here in Auckland. And welcome back to the Marist Seminary. It's such a beautiful day as you can see behind me. Auckland, of course, again is in uh, level three lockdown conditions. And so we're very aware of uh, that situation and we pray for our people, we pray for our country. Uh, yesterday was the patronal feast of New Zealand, the Assumption of Our Lady. And so we unite our prayers with her as we remember all our people especially those most vulnerable at this time. And I'd like to greet also all those who are watching this Eucharist on Shine TV. Our hope was that we didn't have to go through all this again, but here we are. We uh, give thanks for the blessings of the last hundred or so days when we haven't had any coronavirus but we ask the Lord's strength now. Whatever we are called to endure, may we do so with kindness and patience. Christ includes everyone into his kingdom of love and mercy. So mindful of our need for forgiveness, we give thanks for the healing and peace he offers each one of us, and we unite together to celebrate this Eucharist. Lord Jesus, you healed the Canaanite woman's daughter. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You allowed her to change your mind. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And you admired her great faith. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you, 
good things which no eye can see. Fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Have a care for justice, act with integrity, for soon my salvation will come, and my integrity be manifest. Foreigners who have attached themselves to the Lord to serve him, and to love his name, and to be his servants. All who observe the Sabbath, not profaning it, and cling to my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain. I will make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their holocaust and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house will be called a house of prayer for all the peoples. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. O God, be gracious and bless us, and let your face shed its light upon us. So will your ways be known upon earth, and all nations learn your saving help. O God, God let, let all the nations praise you. Let the nations be glad and exult, for your rule, for you rule the world with justice. With fairness you rule the peoples, you guide the nations on earth. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. Let the people praise you, O oh God. Let all the people praise you. May God still give us his blessing till the end of the earth revere him. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Let me tell you pagans this. I have been sent out to the pagans as their apostle, and I am proud of being sent. But the purpose of it is to make my own people envious of you, and in this way some save some of them. Since their rejection meant the reconciliation of the world, do you know that their admission will that their remission will mean? Nothing less than the resurrection from the dead. God never takes back his gifts or revokes his choice. Just as you change from being disobedient to God and now enjoy mercy because of their disobedience, so those who are disobedient now and only because of the mercy shown to you will also enjoy mercy eventually God has imprisoned all people in their own disobedience, only to show mercy to all mankind. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus preached the good news of the kingdom, and healed all who were sick. Alleluia! 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 The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your us. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. 
Jesus left Genesaret and withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. Then out came a Canaanite woman from that district and started shouting, Sir, son of David, have pity on me. My daughter is tormented by a devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples went and pleaded with him. Give her what she wants, they said, because she is shouting after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman had come up and was kneeling at his feet. Lord, she said, help me. He replied, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the house dogs. She retorted, Ah, yes, sir, but even the house dogs can eat the scraps that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, you have great faith. Let your wish be granted. And from that moment her daughter was well again. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There's a real sense of inclusiveness in our readings today. And just a reminder of some of those things. Isaiah speaks of foreigners who have attached themselves to the Lord, being brought to God's holy mountain. And that my house will be called a house of prayer for all peoples. And we responded in our psalm that all the nations are invited to praise God. And in Romans, Paul speaks of his mission to the pagans as their apostle. And Jesus in the gospel responds to a woman not of the Jewish faith and heals her daughter. Inclusiveness. And that inclusiveness extends to each one of us. We can stand in confidence because in Christ we belong and have a place. We are included. His grace and the gift of salvation crosses boundaries even the hardness of our hearts. All peoples and all cultures are valued in God's eyes. For whatever reason, sometimes we may feel excluded and we will certainly know people who feel like that, who feel judged and unwelcome. Today Jesus is saying, I see you. And I hear you. In fact, he always does. The challenge is to speak up and to speak out, to find our voice. And in a sense, to be really real with him. To be real with him in prayer, to say it as it is. As his followers, he wants us to be aware and open to those voices around us and to be people who include rather than exclude. I love the way the Canaanite woman, because of her desperate need, does not let Jesus off the hook. With respect, she will not be silenced. Don't you admire people who speak from a place of conviction and absolute honesty. There's a sense of them being really genuine and our heart goes out to them. I get that sense from some women featured in the media recently struggling to make ends meet in this present climate because of inadequate housing, joblessness and little money for food to provide for their children. There's a cry for help and they keep 
crying out for the sake of their children. The woman in our gospel persists, and I think that it's the only recorded incident in the gospel where Jesus changes his mind. He allows this foreign woman to influence his thinking and his direction, and he gives to her what she asks. Are we prepared to be open to others who challenge our way of thinking? Jesus is prepared to do that. The woman's daughter is made well because Jesus witnesses in her her incredible faith and he is moved with compassion. This woman recognizes who Christ is. She cries out the son of David. She knew him and many of his own people did not. The barrier between Jews and Gentiles comes crashing down in this feisty encounter. The Great Commission to go out to the whole world, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, which comes at the end of Matthew's Gospel, is anticipated here. The good news of Christ is available and open to all. And we are called to be outward looking rather than closed in on ourselves, to be engaged with the world and with people that can challenge us. So the encounter enables all to have a voice, to be respected and heard, to be included as we have heard in the gospel today, for our faith to be tested and for healing to come about. And a woman was a stranger, her daughter was possessed. She begged Jesus to heal her, the Saviour was impressed. Despite her cultural difference, he listened to her need. He told her, go home happy. Your daughter has been freed. She found her voice, and we can too. She made the choice, as we can do. Let's stand and profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. So let's join with that Canaanite woman and cry out to the Lord for those things, for our needs, for the intentions of our country and our world. Let us pray for the church, that she may continue to remain strong in these unknown times. We pray for the Holy Father, Pope Francis, that he continues to shepherd Christ's church in an inspiring manner. For all Christian people, that their faith may remain ever present in Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Let us pray for our government and health officials, that they may continue to work diligently for the health and well-being of all New Zealanders. We pray that they may be given the gift of your strength and endurance as they work to eliminate the virus within our community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all migrants and refugees that each may know their true value here on earth. We pray for their protection as they are forced by war or famine out of their homelands. We pray also that we as a global community may increase our awareness and compassion for all migrants and refugees. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the lonely, and those who have nobody to pray for them. That they may, even in their darkest moments, know that God is always with them, and that they may be aware of our prayers. Pray that we, as Christian people, may reach out to those most vulnerable. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the dying that their passing to eternal life may be joyful and pain-free. We pray for those who have died, that you, O Lord, be merciful towards them, that they, may, that they may now share in the inheritance of eternal life in Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. So we gather these prayers and those that are close to us within our own lives, and we make them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal Mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, and the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Patrick our Bishop and his assistant Michael and all the clergy.
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honour is yours forever and At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other by prayer a sign of peace and our peace specifically goes out to all those who are watching this celebration today. Take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. And let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. It's been a privilege for us to be able to celebrate this Eucharist together as a Maris community, but also to join with you. May our love and God bless you always. And as a way of uh, calling on a Mary, because of the Assumption yesterday in our patronal feast, we'd like to end with a song uh, calling on her prayers to to be with us all, to pray for us all, to pray for our country uh, and all those who are very vulnerable at this time. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May our loving God bless you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.